Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We're back again today with more Strixhaven Commander Precons. We'll be swapping out the Prismari deck with the Silverquill deck, since the Prismari deck won last week. This game turned out to be pretty long, so let's jump straight into who's playing what deck. Up first is Cody playing Adrix and Nev. This commander is crazy if you ask me. It's a parallel lives in the command zone with Ward 2. The precon is already great being a token synergy deck, but imagine being able to upgrade this thing into something insane. I'm excited to see what this deck can do, so let's go ahead and look at his hand. He keeps a hand of two forests, an island, soul ring, biomathematician, Essex fractal bloom, and Azuri's predation. I don't need to explain this hand. It's a soul ring and a precon deck. Snap cube. Alright, and up next is Cameron playing Ozgear. This Boros Precon is a really interesting artifact deck. Artifacts and graveyards have always kind of been a thing, but the fact that you can just double up any artifact in your graveyard with your commander is pretty powerful, and I hope none of the other Precons come with graveyard hate. Now let's get a look at his opening hand. He keeps his 7 consisting of Plains, Boros Garrison, Dispeller's Capsule, Unstable Obelisk, Scrap Trawler, Audacious Reshapers, and Amir Battlesphere. This is a pretty good and decent hand. Boros Garrison allows you to make three land drops, and everything else in his hand has a pretty decent curve. And hopefully he gets enough land drops to make it to Mere Battlesphere. Up next is Justin playing Willow Dusk. This precon, as you can probably tell, synergizes a lot with life gain, and it can also work well with life loss too. And with all these synergies, it makes for some pretty cool play patterns. Now let's move on to his hand. He keeps his 7 of 2 Swamps, a Forest, Dinah, Blight Mound, Healing Technique, and Vincer's Journal. A pretty decent hand. He's got plenty of land drops and can play everything on curve. And if he sticks the Vincer's Journal, a lot of his life gain synergies will come alive. Alright, and now last but not least is our new combatant, Chandler and Brina. This deck is really interesting and unique for a precon. It's an Orzhov political deck. It gives all your opponents incentives to hit each other, while giving you some benefits as well. And you better believe Chandler had to read Brina's block of text to everyone at the table like 10 times. Anyways, let's jump into his starting hand. He also keeps his 7 and keeps Swamp, Caves of Koilos, Study Hall, Mindstone, Promise of Loyalty, Utter End, and Tesa, Envoy of Ghosts. With plenty of land drops, turn 2 ramp, and plenty of board interaction, I'd keep this hand myself too. But enough talk, I'm excited to see this game. Let's jump straight into it now. Chandler wins the die roll, and jumps straight in, playing his caves, and passing. Justin plays a swamp, and passes to Cody. Cody plays a forest, then taps for one, and plays his turn one soul ring. Everyone at the table glares at him, then he passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a plains, then casts Dispeller's Capsule before passing to Chandler. Chandler plays an exotic orchard, taps for two, and casts his mind stone. He passes to Justin. Justin plays a forest, taps for two, and casts Talisman of Resilience before passing to Cody. Cody plays an island, then taps for four, and casts Eureka Moment, drawing two and putting a land from his hand to the battlefield. He passes to Cameron after that. Cameron bounces his planes with Boros Garrison, and then passes to Chandler. Chandler plays a Study Hall, taps for four, and casts Brina, filtering one through Study Hall to scry one. The table attempts to read the card as Chandler resolves his scry. Now that everyone is thoroughly confused, Chandler passes to Justin. Justin plays a Swamp, then taps for two, and casts Dinah. He passes to Cody after that. Cody plays an island as his land for turn, then taps for two to cast a Coiling Oracle. He reveals Kodama's Reach, which goes to his hand. He then casts that Kodama's Reach, searching for two basics, one to the battlefield tapped and one to his hand. And he passes to Cameron while he's searching. And on his turn, Cameron replays his planes, then taps for three and casts Cursed Mirror. As it enters the battlefield, he makes it a copy of Coiling Oracle. He reveals Rogue's Passage, and it gets put onto the battlefield. After that, Cameron passes to Chandler. Chandler casts Spectral Searchlight on his first main phase, then plays Orzhov Basilica, bouncing his study hall. After all that, he passes to Justin. Justin plays a Swamp as his land for turn, then taps for 5 and casts Vincer's Journal. Justin then passes to Cody, and Cody plays a Forest as his land for turn. He then taps for 6 and casts Essex Fractal Bloom. Cody then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Mountain as his land for turn. He then taps for 3 and casts Unstable Obelisk. After that, he taps for 4 and casts his commander, Ozgear, before passing to Chandler. Chandler replays his study hall, then taps for 7 and casts Tesa. Chandler then passes to Justin. Justin gains 4 life off of his Vincer's journal, 
And at this point, I just want to let you guys know we accidentally read Dina wrong. Uh, for some reason, we thought she was a sanguine bond on a two mana creature, which is absolutely absurd now that I think about it. It doesn't affect the game too much, but it was still a mistake on our part and we apologize for that. And so after everyone mistakenly loses four life, Justin plays Witch's Clinic, then taps for six and casts Nissa's Renewal, searching for three basic lands and putting one to the battlefield tapped, then gaining seven life. And yes, everybody also mistakenly loses seven life but I assure you this is the last time it happens. Justin then passes to Cody while he's searching. Cody casts his commander and then Biomathematician. The tokens are doubled and he chooses to make them coiling oracles thanks to Essex. He reveals Trigon Predator and Opal Palace. Opal Palace goes onto the battlefield. Cody then swings at Justin, drawing a card and Chandler puts two 1-1 counters on Tesa. And after that, he passes to Cameron. Cameron immediately moves to combat and attacks Justin. Cameron draws a card and Chandler puts two counters on Brina. And after combat, Cameron plays a planes. After that, he taps his mirror for a red, then sacrifices it to Ozgear. He then exiles the mirror, paying three mana and activating Ozgear to make two tokens of it. Cameron makes them both copies of Coiling Oracle, and reveals Dark Steel Mutation off his first one, and Excavation Technique off the second. He then casts Scrap Trawler, and then passes to Chandler. And Chandler plays a Swamp as his land for turn. He then moves to combat, swinging Tesa at Justin, putting two counters on it, and drawing a card. And Justin takes eight. Chandler then just decides to pass, and on his end step, Cameron sacrifices Dispeller's Capsule to blow up the Vincer's Journal. And on his turn, Justin taps for 4 to cast Healing Technique. He chooses to demonstrate it on Chandler, because he has no cards in his graveyard. Chandler, wanting to actually be able to use his copy, decides to Utter End Dinah. And so Chandler decides to return Utter End back to his hand and gains 4 life. Justin gets back Nissa's Renewal and Vincer's Journal, but forgets to gain his life. He then casts Blight Mound and then passes to Cody. Cody starts his turn off with a basic island, then taps for two and casts Geometric Nexus. After that, he moves to combat and swings for two at Justin, drawing a card, and Chandler puts two more counters on Tesa. Cody then casts Trigon Predator and then passes to Cameron. Cameron moves to combat immediately, swinging four more commander at Justin. Cameron draws a card and Chandler puts two more counters on Tesa. Cameron then casts Excavation Technique and decides to demonstrate it. Chandler gets the demonstration copy and Chandler decides to blow up Cody's Geometric Nexus. Cameron's copies hit Tesa and Adrix and Nev, and Cameron pays for the ward cost. The Geometric Nexus gets four counters, so Cody decides to remove them to make a 0-0, but instead making them two more Coiling Oracles. These two Coiling Oracle copies reveal Lonely Sandbar and Ride of Replication. Cameron then secret rendezvous targeting Justin, and they both draw three cards. Cameron then activates Ozgear to make two copies of Dispeller's Capsule. Cameron then passes to Chandler, and on his end step, Chandler utter ends Essex. And then on his turn, he plays a tapped mirrored landscape as his land for turn. He then casts Stalking Leonin, secretly choosing Cody. He then moves to combat and swings Brina at Cody. Chandler then passes to Justin. Justin plays a Blighted Woodland, then casts Sapling of Kulfenor. After this, he casts Tivash, and then passes to Cody. Cody starts his turn off by using Soul Ring and the four treasures he got to recast his commander. He then kicks a Rite of Replication, copying Coiling Oracle. The spell resolves, and he makes ten Coiling Oracles. He flips a Rogue's Passage off the first one, then a Tranquil Thicket, then a Cassetto Orochi Archmage, then an Island, a Crossing Grip, Hornet Nest, Mosswort Bridge, which triggers Hideaway, a Sequence Engine, another Island, and finally a Terastodon. Cody then moves to combat and swings Trigon Predator at Cameron, triggering Brina. Cameron takes the damage and Cody destroys one of his Dispeller's Capsule. Cody then just passes the turn to Cameron. Cameron plays a Planes, then moves to combat, swinging Scrap Trawler at Justin, triggering Brina. Justin blocks it and the Scrap Trawler dies. After this, Cameron casts Audacious Reshapers. He then casts Thousand Year Elixir. He then activates them, sacrificing Unstable Obelisk, and starts flipping cards. He gets a Triplicate Titan off the top of his library, and loses one life. Cameron then activates Ozgear, exiling Unstable Obelisk, making two token copies of it. Cameron then activates Thousand Year Elixir to untap his reshapers, but Cody has a response. He beasts within Cameron's reshapers. Cameron then taps for two, taking one to his land, and Darksteel mutations Cody's commander, and everyone forgets that ward two is a thing. Cody asks Chandler for a mana, and Chandler's feeling generous, so he gives it to him, so Cody makes a green, then Cross and grips the Dark Steel mutation. Cameron then passes to Chandler. Chandler moves straight to combat, swinging three at Cody. Brina triggers. 
Cody blocks for the Coiling Oracle. And then after combat, Chandler taps for five and casts Promise of Loyalty. Each player chooses a creature and sacrifices the rest. Cameron does get three 3-3 three, three tokens out of this though. Chandler then casts Guardian Archon, secretly naming Cameron. He then passes to Justin. Justin decides it's time to redeploy the Venser's Journal, and then passes to Cody. Cody decides to just go ahead and cast Desolation Twin, making two more 10-10s. Ten then then cast Garrick Primal Hunter, immediately down-ticking him, and drawing 10 cards. Cody then plays a Forest, then casts Idol of Oblivion, activates it, then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Mountain, and then moves to combat, swinging three in the air at Justin and triggering Brina. After combat, Cameron tasks her six and casts a Hellkite Tyrant. Uh-oh. Cameron then activates Ozgear for six and exiles Duplicant. He gets two copies of it. Cameron decides to exile Desolation Twin and Chandler's Commander. Chandler activates his secret trap card revealing Cameron as the chosen player, giving Brina and himself protection from Cameron till end of turn. Cameron, happy that he has a 10-10 and a 2-4 on his board, passes to Chandler. On his turn, Chandler plays Miko Koro as land for turn. Then, he casts Angel of Serenity, exiling Hellkite Tyrant, one of Cameron's 10-10s, and one of Cody's 10-10s. Chandler then swings 7 in the air at Justin to trigger Brina. After this, he passes to Justin, who gains 5 to Venser's Journal. He then casts Pulse of Murasa, getting back his sapling, which he immediately recasts. Justin then moves to his end step, pays 11 life, and makes an 11-11 flyer. And on Cody's turn, he casts a Master Biomancer into Azuri's Predation. Uh oh. With 11 creatures on the field and his token doubler, Cody makes 22 4-4s that come in with two 1-1 counters. Luckily, it says all those creatures have to fight different creatures, but essentially anything with 6 toughness or less is dead. But now we have a different problem. 22 6 sixes is a little, uh, hard to handle, as I would say. So Cameron gets his creatures wiped. Luckily for Chandler, all his creatures have toughness 7 or higher, and Justin only loses one creature. And unfortunately, Justin misses a Blight Mountain trigger. Cody then activates his Idol of Oblivion to draw a card, and not satisfied with his card draw, he decides to cast Shamanic Revelation, drawing 25 and gaining 92. But not yet satisfied, he swings 12 at Cameron and a Brina trigger is missed. Cody then passes to Cameron, who prays to top a board wipe. Cameron plays a mountain, and then recasts Ozgear. Cameron then casts Ruin Grinder. And Cody really doesn't want anybody to be able to wheel, so he rapid hybridizations Ozgear. But the rest of the table really wants a fresh seven, so Chandler fractures the Ruin Grinder. And so everyone dumps their hand and draws a fresh seven. Cameron casts an Eager Wellspring. After this, Cameron passes to Chandler. Chandler immediately moves straight to combat, swinging Brina at Cody, triggering her. Chandler then casts Secret Rendezvous, targeting Justin. And really just trying to find that board wipe, Chandler oblations his Mind Stone to draw two cards. And not being able to find anything else, he just casts Windborn Muse, praying that it'll keep him alive for another turn. And Chandler then just passes to Justin. And on his turn, Justin, the people's hero, casts Gaze of Granite, X is equal to zero, destroying all tokens. Justin then casts Moldvine Reclamation. And it's at this point we've been playing for about an hour, so everyone takes a break to eat some pizza, and then we come back and Justin reminds us what happened during his turn. He then passes to Cody. Cody plays an island as his land for turn, and trying to find some way to remove Brina because he's scared of that commander damage, casts Golden Ratio to draw a card. He then drops Oversimplify, exiling all creatures. Then each player makes a 0-0 Fractal and puts counters on it equal to the total power of their creatures exiled this way. And so Chandler makes a 27-27, Cody a 4-4, and Justin a 2-2. And with Cody now clinging to life, he casts a Hornet Queen. After that, he casts a Champion of Wits, drawing two and discarding two. Cody then passes to Cameron. Cameron immediately taps for four and slams to ready. Cameron sacrifices his Eager Wellspring to get back Mere Battlesphere. He then hard casts Wake the past. He returns back to the battlefield with haste. Hiker Wellspring, um, Steel Hellkite, Sculpting Steel, Bosch, Ruin Grinder, Scrap Trawler, and Triple K Titan. And he has his Sculpting Steel come in as a copy of Mere Battlesphere. Cameron then moves to combat, swinging Ruin Grinder at Chandler, Triplicate Titan at Justin, and Steel Hellkite at Cody. 
You're probably wondering why Cameron doesn't swing the Hellkite at Chandler to destroy his 2727. That's because Chandler said if he didn't, he would swing it at Cody instead. Justin and Chandler take their damage, and Cody blocks the Hellkite with a Death Touch Insect. Cameron then passes to Chandler. Chandler plays a Rogue's Passage as his land for turn, which makes Cameron very nervous because Chandler activates it, targeting his 2727, and casts a Necropolis Regent. He then moves to combat and swings 27 unblockable at Cody. The Necropolis Regent doubles its power, and it becomes a 54-54. Chandler then passes to Justin, who plays a Jungle Hollow as his land. He also remembers to gain 6 life to Vencer's journal. Justin then feed the swarms Chandler's 54-54. After that, he reckless spites both of Cameron's mere battle spheres. After this, he casts Gift of Paradise, gaining 3 life and enchanting a land. He then casts Rampant Growth, finding a swamp to the battlefield tapped. And it's during this time, Cody decides to count his library, and realizes he only has 9 cards left in his library. And then, Justin passes to Cody. Cody plays Temple of the False God and casts Dika Fractal Theorist. He then pays for it to make his 4-4 Fractal unblockable, and then activates Rogue's Passage to make his Champion of Wits unblockable. He then casts Replication Technique, not demonstrating it, to make a token copy of Hornet Queen, getting more Death Touch Flyers. He then activates Idol of Oblivion to draw a card. After this, he moves to combat. He swings one Insect at Doretti, then everything else at Cameron and Cameron blocks the 2-2 Death Touch in the air with his Triplicate Titan. When the Titan dies, he gets back Sculpting Steel with his Scrap Trawler trigger. He then passes to Cameron. Cameron moves to combat immediately and once again swings 7 at Chandler, then 6 Trample at Justin, and 3 Vigilance at Justin. Justin blocks the 6-7 Trample with his 2-2. He draws a card and gains a life off of it though. Cameron then casts the Sculpting Steel that he got back, copying Vincer's Journal. He then sacrifices Ruin Grinder to Bosch, doming Justin for 6. And this is where a pretty big misplay and accident happens. Because Ruin Grinder is one of the new cards in this commander set, nobody realized that you MAY discard your hand and draw 7. And not realizing this, Cody discards his hand and draws the last 7 cards in his deck. But he doesn't concede though, he says he might have something to do on his upkeep. And so, Cameron casts Faithless Looting, drawing two cards and discarding two cards before passing to Chandler. On Chandler's turn, he gives his Regent unblockable and swings at Cameron. Cam responds by activating Bosch, sacrificing itself, and dealing 8 to the Regent. Chandler then plays a Plains and casts Arcane Signet before passing to Justin. Thanks to Cameron's wheel, Justin gains 7 on his upkeep. He then plays a Swamp, and then casts Greed. After this, he passes to Cody, who loses when he goes to draw a card. Then it becomes Cameron's turn who gains 6 life on his upkeep. He then casts Jorkadeen, which gives all of his creatures plus 3 plus 0. Justin responds by paying 8 life and 4 mana to draw 4 cards. Cameron then moves to combat, swinging his 8 4 ones at Chandler and the rest at Justin. But Chandler was waiting for this and casts Ink Shield. All 32 damage coming to him is prevented and he creates 32 2 ones with flying. Justin decides to Mortality Spear Cameron's Flyer, but it really doesn't matter at this point. Justin goes ahead and concedes, but Cameron, trying to find a way out of this, flashes back his Faithless Looting. But he's not able to find anything, and concedes to Chandler. Everyone has a good laugh, because this was a pretty long game and a lot of goofy mistakes were made. But today, Chandler is our winner. Whew, that was a pretty long game. I will say it was much longer for us to play than it was to watch. There were some very long turns taken that game. These decks were all extremely new to us, never really been played before. Which kind of explains all the mistakes. Yeah, sorry about that you guys. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Next week we'll be doing a video where we put $50 worth of upgrades into these decks. And then after that, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled competitive and casual videos. Before I let you go, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Links will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching us again, and have a smooth day.